to sum it up E class on the ninth pi D S E R E by Jyoti Bani. Today we are discussing class six general science subject. So in the previous class we have discussed chapter one that is food. Where does it comes from? Today we will be discussing chapter two. I have divided this chapter two into a two session children. That is components of food. So the chapter name is the components of food. This is the chapter two in your class six general science. Before starting to a class, let us have a puzzle game about the previous class. Whatever you have learned, I have given some work also to do it. So now, materials used to make a dish, animals that heat, flesh of dead animals, an example of dairy products across germinating seeds, an example of poultry products, an example of omnivore. We step this from flower to make honey. So this have the clues which I am giving. Solve this puzzle, children, by using your knowledge of chapter first. Yes, let us see the answers. That is the first one ingredients. The second one for us, the answer is scavengers. Third one butter, and the fourth one sprouts. The fifth one egg. Punjab 
and the vegetables are used in Punjab is sarsal, sar, mustard, leaf curries. With that, with this, they use curd ghee. And in Andhra Pradesh, the item of grain they use rice. The item of dal or meat they use tudar and rasam. And also the vegetables, a kunduru, that is a kundekai, buttermilk, ghee, pickle. In Karnataka, we use ragi balls, turdal, sambar, vegetables like tomato, carrot, beans, ladies finger, brinjal. All these are vegetables which are being used in our Karnataka. With this, we use papad, buttermilk, pickle as well as curd in our meat. In Bihar, so they prefer a linti, roti and they use a dal, brinjal, green vegetables, all this are being used in Bihar. With this, they may add a ghee also in their mix. So, you have understood children, different food items are being used in a different state and different region and it also varies from region to region. Now you have understood, we have varieties of food, right? Are this required to have a varieties of food or different types of food in our meals? If you are traveling, we may eat whatever is available on the way. It may not possible for some to us to eat such varieties of items most of the time, correct? So there must be some reason why meals usually consist of such distribution. Do you think our body needs a different kinds of food for some special purpose? Yes, children, you have to think because Whatever we eat, we should know what we are eating, what are the things we are it is going to our body, what we need to our body. So, what is the thing which is required for our body and what is there in that food, so we will learn it. So, that is the meaning of nutrients. As you know, the food is essential for the body as it keeps us healthy, helps in the growth of our body. The food contains some useful substances that organisms need to be alive to live and grow this useful components are called as nutrients. Remember, the useful components present in the food we call as nutrients. I am repeating children, this is a term which is used continuously. You should remember the meaning of nutrients. N-U-T-R-I-E-N-T-E-S. What do you mean by nutrients? It is nothing but the important components which is present in the food. Okay, that we call as a nutrients. This nutrients plays a vital role in our body children. And food is obtained both from plants and animals and then cooked by adding some ingredients. This concept we have already discussed. We have a two source of food that is which we get it from plants as well as animals. And to prepare a delicious food, we use a different ingredients are the materials are the raw materials which are being used to prepare a delicious food. Clear with the meaning of nutrients children? Yes. Now we will study the major nutrients of food or it is also called as constituents of food. So we have major nutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals. These are the major nutrients present in the food items which are those carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals. In addition to this, we should also have a dietary fibers, it is also called roughages and water. Major nutrients, very very important children, you should know the term carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins and minerals, fats, dietary fibers and water. Now we will discuss each and every constituent of food. First we will discuss the carbohydrates. All our activities require energy. Our energy supplies come from the two major sources. Which are those children? Yes. The major source of energies are cereals, sugar, jaggery, some kinds of fruits and potatoes. And this food items contains a large quantities of chemicals which we call as carbohydrates. All the food items which treat to taste contains a carbohydrates. This food contains a large quantity of chemicals called as carbohydrates. So what carbohydrates consist of? It is composed of three elements children, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. They are the source of energy and thus the food containing carbohydrates are called as energy giving food. So 
whatever the food item which contains a carbohydrates, such food items we call as the energy giving foods, which is the simple carbohydrates. So remember starch and the glucose. Out of this, we the glucose is the simplest carbohydrates. It is easily utilized by the body to release energy. So glucose is the simplest carbohydrates children, which is used to get the energy. Now let us look at the sources of carbohydrates. So by seeing this picture, you can come to know what are the food items which contains a carbohydrates. Rice, jaggery, saburan, sugar, bread, honey, fruits, potato, vegetables. These are the food items which consist of carbohydrates. Now we will study about the proteins. The proteins are composed of carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen and sulfur in different amounts. Nitrogen is the most essential element in protein children. Proteins are made up of a simple substances called amino acids and they help in the building of new cells and repairing the old of tissues. Thus the food items containing the proteins are called as body building food. The food items which contains the proteins they are also called as body building foods. What are the sources of proteins? By seeing the picture you can see it's all the pulses, green gram, dal, moong dal, dal, osram, soya, bean, egg, milk. These are the sources of protein children. Based on the availability of proteins, we have a types of proteins. So on the basis of the availability of proteins, we have a two types. One is the plant proteins as well as animal proteins. What are animal proteins? Proteins which are from animal products are called as animal proteins. Example, meat, fish, egg and milk are some sources of animal proteins. The proteins which are obtained from plant products are called as plant protein. Example, pulses, soya beans, grams, cashew are some sources of plant proteins. Let us discuss about the fats. Fats provides us energy. In fact, they give us twice the energy that food carbohydrates gives us children. Based on the sources of fats which are obtained to us, it has been classified into animal fats as well as plant fats. So animal fats, milk and milk products are the animal fats. Plant fats, vegetable oils are the sources of plant fats children. Now, it's a very very important, how do you we know that what are the food contains what nutrients? Very very important children, do all this food contains all this nutrients? With the simple method of we can test whether cooked food or raw ingredients contains one or more this nutrients. The test of carbohydrates, proteins and fats is easy when you compare with the other tests. For this you need some solution, apparatus, materials. Let us have a look what are the apparatus which is required to test the nutrients in a given sample. To test the nutrients, so we need some apparatus which are been there in the laboratory. So this is called as test tube stands with the test tubes. So I have taken a measuring cylinders, beakers, conical flask, chemicals which is required to prepare the solution, glass rod for stirring, spatula, test tube holder, dropper, a solution and watch glass. So these are the apparatus which is required to test the nutrients. Yes, children. You had a look, no? Yes. Now we understand what are the solution which is required and what is the steps you have to follow to prepare the solution. So first solution we have to prepare to test the carbohydrate that is the dilute iodine solution. For this you need children pincher, water, beaker, glass rod and dropper. The procedure we, you have to follow to prepare a dilute Ionic solution is take a few drops of tincture, add to 100 ml or 50 ml of water, see the solution and keep aside for the test. So remember children, this dilute solution is required to test the presence of starch. So let us have a look. 
Let us know how to prepare dilute iodine solution which is required for to test the carbohydrates present in the food items. So for that we need a tincture, 50 ml of water, beaker as well as glass rod. Take 10 ml of iodine to a beaker. Add 50 ml of water to 10 ml of iodine. Stir it well. So this is called dilute iodine solution which is used to test the presence of carbohydrates in the food items. children will prepare a two solution which is required for testing of proteins for this you need two chemicals called sodium hydroxide flakes called as caustic soda copper sulfate CuSO4 beaker conical flask spatula and older as well as a glass rod and water. First, we'll prepare solution of caustic soda. 10 grams of caustic soda or sodium hydroxide flakes in a beaker approximately. Add 100 ml of water. Take a glass rod and stir it and leave for some time until it dissolves. So this is a solution of caustic soda which is required for testing of proteins. Now we will prepare a solution of copper sulphate. So take 10 grams of copper sulphate in a conical flask add 100 ml of water and stir it. Children you can see the blue color which is a copper sulfate solution. So first solution which we have prepared is a solution of caustic soda. It is completely dissolved. In the second solution it is a solution of copper sulfate. These two are used to test the proteins. Yes, children, you have come to know how to prepare the solutions. Now, we will test for the starch. So, the aim of this test is to test the presence of starch in a food sample. Whether it contains a starch or a protein or other fats. So, the material required, it is food sample, iodine solution which you have already prepared test tubes. What is the procedure you have to follow? Take a food sample, raw or it may be a cooked food in a test tube, watch glass, take 2-3 two, two, drops of dilute solution on the food sample, observe the changes children. Key thing you have to observe, you can see a blue black color appear in the food. 
color diagrams. By this, we can inference that a blue black color indicates that food contains starch. You can also repeat this test with other food items to find out which contains proteins. Children, remember, iodine solution is used to test the starch and also the blue black color will indicate the presence of starch. Let us have a look in the video. Now, when test for starch, it's a constituent of carbohydrates. For this, I have taken a food items which are rich in carbohydrates. Rice flour, jowar flour, rice, tur dal, milk, jaggery, egg white, cooked rice, a slice of bread and the solution that which we have prepared, dilute iodine solution. For this, I have taken a rice flour, mixed with water, shake it. For this, you have to add 2 to 3 drops of iodine solution. Children, you can observe a blue-black color which indicate the presence of starch. Keenly, you have to observe. Next, I have taken jowar flour and mix with water and dilute iodine solution. Now, I have taken a soaked rice, the water of soaked rice, just adding a 2 to 3 drops of iodine solution. So, you can see the color changes to a blue black and this indicate the presence of starch now we can take a cooked rice don't waste the food for the testing purpose I have taken so add a two to three drops of iodine solution to a cooked food children you can observe the color blue black color which indicate the presence of starch now I take a slice of a bread for other items I have taken a dal soaked as well as cooked dal water and I am adding a iodine solution for it children can you see any changes there is no blue black color this indicate there is a no starch in it now I have taken a milk also have taken the egg white I am adding a 2 to 3 drops of iodine solution there is no change in the color so this indicates the absence of starch the blue black color indicates the presence of starch okay so you have observed in which test you you saw a a blue black color and the which you have not seen the blue black so this indicates the presence of starch so i hope you have got to know how to test the carbohydrates now let us go to the test for proteins very simple we have already prepared the solution children to test the presence of proteins in a food sample you need a materials that is food samples solution of caustic soda and copper sulfide so procedure which you have to follow is take a food sample in a test tube add 10 ml of caustic soda solution then add 10 ml of copper sulfide solution to the test tube containing food sample observe the changes you can observe a violet color appear in the test tube children this violet color indicates the food contains a protein so let us have a look in the video how the violet color appears in the food item which contains a protein now we'll test proteins for this I have taken all the pulses, grind it to a fine powder, milk and egg white. And the solution, caustic soda solution as well as copper sulphate solution. In the first test tube, I have taken all the pulses, grind it and I put a water to it, it dissolves. You have to add a solution of caustic soda. 2 to 3 drops then 
followed by copper sulfate solution you can see the color gets changing children to a violet this violet indicates the presence of proteins can you see now i have taken milk next i have taken a uh, egg white you can see the violet color which indicates the presence of proteins now i have taken a cooked dal which indicates the presence of proteins yes children so violet color which appears in the dal as well as egg white and also milk next we'll have a look how to test the fats now we'll test the nutrient called fats for this i have taken mustard almond groundnut coconut cashew nut sesame and cooked vegetables the seeds on the white sheets and you can see the patches of oil mustard almond groundnut cashew the ghee the coconut sesame and the cooked wood so the water it leaves and all other uh, sources of fats which leaves the patches on the white sheet this patches which indicates the presence of fats so thank you children all this experiment supported by vidya mandir public school amrutali bangalore oily patches on the white sheet indicates the presence of fats complete look what are the nutrients whether that nutrients for which contains a protein starch or fat by seeing this you have to remember a uh, blue black in color indicates the presence of starch a violet color indicates the presence of proteins and the oily patches on the sheet indicates the presence of fat students let us summarize this session children the meal the food taken during different times of the day the component of food is called as nutrients the major components of food are carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and minerals in addition to this refrigerants and water are dietary fibers are also important part of our diet and food items containing carbohydrates are called as energy giving food the food items containing the proteins are called as body building foods the carbohydrates can be tested by using a iodine solution proteins can be tested by using a copper sulfate and caustic soda solution children before heading i like to give some homework so this time i have given certain questions circle the odd one out give reason for your answer so you have to encircle of odd of this given food items and you have to give the reason also children pulses meat peas and bread the second one is fruit honey potato sugar next the name the following so energy giving food you have to name the what it is called as and the sources of food and body building food thank you children myself sudha r i am working as assistant science teacher in vidya mandir public school amrutali bangalore